I'm currently 3 weeks into 3D printing a Warlord Titan and I've just made a huge breakthrough. And it's all because of some major disasters in standard SAM fashion. This project and video is sponsored by Frozen and in this video I'll be using their Mega 8K which you may have already heard is being succeeded by a newer cheaper version. I'm taking full advantage of this 15 inch plate while I have it. So I 3D printed the huge shoulders to the Warlord Titan on the Mega and used the Mighty 8K to print some of the arm pieces. I hollowed out both pieces to save on resin without hopefully affecting the integrity of them as they're going to be holding up some huge guns. Washing and curing these large pieces is a task on its own with trying to fit them all in as efficiently as possible. With each curing plate taking 5 minutes, it's meant that there has been a few times during this project where I'm just sitting for half an hour curing things because I don't want to keep changing gloves, which isn't really fun as you could probably imagine. In my previous video, I printed off all of the big shoulder plates and I hollowed them out to save on resin. And all was good. That was until I checked on them a few days later and they had unfortunately exploded. So now they will either be base fodder for another project upcoming or some much needed practice for painting. If it wasn't for someone else in the Discord having the exact same issue, I would have took a very long braver from the Titan project. I know I'm not the best at supporting or at hollowing. I mean, that much is obvious if you follow this journey, but I am the best at adapting. I've mentioned before, this would take roughly 10 to 12 kilograms of resin. But when I said that, a lot of people actually commented saying that I must be doing something wrong because theirs only came out to six kilograms. So I started to look more into it to see if there was a way to use less resin. And if you've watched one of my previous videos about using an FDM printer to make some diorama bases for the Reaver and the Warhound, you may already be up to date with my findings. But I have made a decision to print off the skeletal structure out of PLA for a number of reasons. But the main reason is that I can't afford for a leg to just explode and the rest to come crashing down. I do have to say, the combination of using the Mega 8K and its huge 15 inch plate for the armor pieces and FDM for the skeleton has really just made this project a whole lot easier both mentally and physically to complete. If you've ever thought about printing off a Titan, it really is a, well, titanic undertaking. Unless you're just an absolute giga chad at all aspects of 3D printing. But even though it's a big undertaking, I think everybody with a 3D printer that is even contemplating having a Titan should do it. Maybe with more planning and knowledge, it would be easier. So certainly feel free to take notes throughout my experience of printing it so far of what not to do, because I sure have made a lot of mistakes. If you do decide to print one out, then don't put a time limit on yourself. I originally had it in my head that I would be able to print out an entire Titan Legion, including the Warlord, in one to two months, while still aiming to put out videos every week and everything that goes alongside that. It definitely is possible, but don't worry if you fall behind pace or get demotivated like I have halfway through. 3D printing a Titan is as much about the process than the end piece, as corny as that sounds. Maybe it's just my brain's way of trying to justify why I'm doing this and why it's taken me so long. Earlier in the week, a fellow brother from the Discord had gave a huge update on their Warlord Titan that they had printed and they stormed way ahead of me. Absolutely outstanding work. If you want to support the project and get your own model in what could be YouTube history, then consider joining these absolute legends defending the Titan Legion from the enemy. These legends donated directly to the project through PayPal, which I'll link down below in the description. 
If you want to support the channel more and join possibly the best Discord in the universe, then consider becoming a Patreon or YouTube member. I also decided at this point to start painting the Titan as I printed. Otherwise, I'm going to be left with a huge model to add to the pile of shame, and I don't really want to do that. This colour scheme of red and gold has somewhat become my go-to colour scheme for these titans. I'm not particularly following a certain scheme, it's just the way I like to paint them. In the private discord, which again you can join by becoming a Patreon or YouTube member, there is a section for Patreons to ask questions and I thought instead of boring you with what paints I'll be using and why I'm painting this way, I would actually answer some of them. One of the questions was why is there such a stigma when it comes to 3D printing and in the current state of the economy wouldn't a cost effective way of being able to start or even continue the hobby be a good thing? Well in my completely biased opinion on the surface level it's because people that have spent thousands of pounds or dollars on models should be annoyed at 3D printing. Put it this way You've went and bought a printer and supplies for say $500 and printed out thousands of points of armies for a fraction of the cost. The flip side to this benefit is of course there's limitations. You can't use your 3D prints in a Games Workshop store or event, but you can use 3D printed parts like custom shoulder pads on your legitimate models. You can't get one to ones of every model. But if you're like me, after you've been in the hobby long enough, you start looking for proxies because there's a lot of neglected sculpts from G-dubs that small creators in the 3D printed space just simply do better. One to one models seem to be the biggest instigator to the stigma against 3D printing because it brings up the aspect of copying the IP. For me, without 3D printing, I probably wouldn't be in the hobby. And I'm not ashamed to say because I couldn't afford it. And I know that there are many people out there that feel the exact same way. It isn't for everyone, but if you have the space or means to do it, then I think it's amazing. The only way the stigma will go away is whenever GW release their own 3D printer. If you did like this question segment, let me know in the comments section below. I find it more enjoyable to do and listen to rather than describing how I'm painting something on screen. And there's loads of interesting questions that have been asked in the Discord. The Mega AK is a fantastic printer and if you've watched the channel before, you know I don't really do reviews, but I also don't promote printers that I don't like. The 15 inch build plate really is huge and I've joked before about the extra 5 inches being huge, but it really is. The fact that it's able to put out 8K detail is amazing and I wish that my Halloween skills were better so I could use this printer to its full potential and print the entire Warlord in resin. You should watch this video next because I 3D printed a model that's been lost in time and made my first diorama. As always, I want to give a huge thanks to my Patreons and members because without you, none of this is possible and you're all amazing and I'll see you all in the Discord.